Good morning, everyone. Uh, I think like most of you already connected. So uh, last time yesterday we stopped on doing this uh, projection of the cash flows with uh, straight line depreciation to zero, and it was the last thing that we did it. But uh, we said we're gonna do it as well with parts. We're gonna do it with uh, modified accelerated. methodology as well and we'll go with the replacement cost so this is the project uh, cash flow that we do it for expansion of the business or for the new product but uh, to do the same thing for projection for the cash flows is totally different and we're gonna see but the at the end we're gonna do we're gonna apply the income statement so we said that our fixed uh, capital was one investment in fixed capital was one hundred thousand or one hundred million. Then change in networking capital was uh, ten million, and additional. Uh, so in total, our outlay, our investment cost is one hundred and ten. So the sales, uh, it was one hundred twenty, one hundred sixty, one forty, fifty, and cash operating expenses. It was seventy percent of the sales. This is how we get it, which is multiply 70% by sales, and we get uh, operating cash flow expenses. And then depreciation is straight line to the zero is three years. In three years, it's gonna be used. So we just divide 100 by three, and we get 33, 33, 33, and just uh, at the end, it's zero. So uh, earnings before tax or operating com income before tax is just sales minus all expenses. You derive it, then you just apply the tax on it and we get operating income after tax. Then we should add the depreciation back as because it's a, a non-cash item and we are adding back. And we get after tax operating cash flows are here. So, and at the end, we need to find out the terminal non operating cash flow. It's here. It was five, the salvage value minus uh, this is how much we sell it for, and there's a 35% is tax. So, deduction of taxes will give you uh, the net value of the value is 3.25 plus uh, change in networking capital. We are adding back here as well. So, in total, we're going to have 13.25 million. So, these things should be added to 9.75 million. In total, we're going to have these cash flows. So, we have investment cost was 110, 35 uh, million, 42 million, 38 million, and 23 million. So, what is the NPV? Uh, we just get the NPV of it, and we assume that the required rate of return is 8% and cash flows then we subtract the investment costs and we get the npv npv is seven million it's positive number so we accept the project uh, it's good project and we can say that what is the npv with irr npv with irr is equal to zero this is what we did yesterday uh, do you have any questions Okay. Uh, this was uh, done, and then uh, let's do the same thing, but with a different methodology of dep depreciation, like modified uh, accelerated recovery cost system methodology. And here, investment cost is the same. Uh, sales is the same. Operating expenses are same, but depreciation is different. Depreciation is going to be changed. Okay, it's not a uh, straight line to depreciation. It's a modified uh, accelerated recovery system. So what we're doing here is we need to get a certain table. According to that table, we need to derive depreciation. So this certain table is given in the book itself. It's here. Uh, it's page. It's ninety. Uh, it's the page seventy-five. So this is the table that we use it. So we can see the number of years here, three years, five years, seven years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. So how much we're gonna use uh, the, our equipment. So we're gonna select appropriately the rate of the depreciation actually. 
So 33, 44, 14, and 7 percent are here given for four years. If our uh, while the useful life uh, is three years, we're going to see how it looks like. Then uh, in the example, it's given here. If we proceed back to the example, it says uh, the asset life is three years. So we're going to see uh, three years from the table here, three years. So we're going to just apply the 33% on sales, okay? So on the investment cost, 33%, uh, the asset uh, purchase price that we paid at the beginning, right? It's a book value. That should be recorded. So 33 in the second year, it's 44%. In the third year, it's 14%. In the fourth year, it's 7%. So in the first year, so uh, in the first year, it should be 33%. So 0 0.33 times 100, okay? Then times 100, 33, but it's giving me a negative sign, but let me make it like this. Then in the second year, I should apply the another rate, is, which is 44.45. 0 0.4445 times 100. In the third year, I'm applying the third corresponding rate, 14.81. 0 14.81 times 100. And in the fourth year, in the left, the year, which is 7.41, 0 0.0741 times 100. So this is, we get a depreciation by a modified accelerated recovery system. Then we subtract from the sales, the cash operating expense the same way, depreciation straight line to zero. And at the end, we come up with taxes that we need to apply on EBT, earnings before tax. So we derive the operating income tax, income after the tax, which is 1.95, 2.31 and so on. And then depreciation uh, should be added back with the same reason, like it's been a non-cash item, we derive the after tax cash flows. So this is how we get the cash flows projected for calculation of the NPV. And this is our investment cost, should be negative. Okay, so here we have uh, cash flow here, added here, added here, and exactly the same thing with the terminals, uh, non operating cash flow. We, it's not going to be changed because we only change in here the depreciation methodology. Now, depreciation methodology in here is not the straight line, but it's modified MRCS. Max system. So this is how we get it. Now, I would like you to pay the attention to the tax rate. In the first year, tax rate, if you compare with uh, straight line zero, it's lower but in the second year can you see that the tax we pay in the second year higher with the straight line depreciation zero so we pay in here three then five so in here we in the second year we pay less but in the third year we pay even higher but in this we pay 
lower, but uh, still the cash flow is changing if you compare uh, with the rate is given here. So uh, with this rate, it helps us at the first initial years kind of to reduce the pressure from the tax. Why it is important, especially for the US when the tax rate is not 35, it's around 50% in the Europe countries is 50%. And it's very difficult for the companies uh, to come up with the tax payment because to reduce the tax pressure, they are trying to play out with the depreciation. So initial years, like it's going to be difficult to generate the cash flow. So that's why they may decide to use the depreciation of mark. But eventually, more or less, they pay the same while of the tax. But at least uh, it helps us to reduce the pressure uh, first years from the tax side. So then we derive the cash flows. Uh, cash flows are the same. So what we do here, uh, we let us compare our NP, but the cash flow are more or less the same, but with some differentiation, but you can see the NPV, the net present value with a straight line depreciation is uh, bigger than with the modified accelerated system. So you can just play around how you can uh, kind of downgrade your NPV or upgrade your NPV by, use, by choosing the different methodologies. Because the cash flow a bit changes in some cases, it's like 46, 76. But you know, it's as we talk about the change in here, it's just seven something, but it's seven million. If it's billions, it even, even makes a big difference, like 1% change or like 10 basis changes. It's going to make a really huge differentiation in changes in MPV because once you change the methodology of depreciation, so it plays a significant role. Sometimes you may decide to reduce, sometimes you may decide to increase your MPV with the purposes. So it will depend on the situation. So this is what we do for expansion or introducing new products in the market. Like this is how we project our cash flows. In the first example here, we did like it was fixed. Then we assume the sales are changing and operation expenses uh, changing accordingly with a different methodologies. And now we can talk about uh, replacement cost. Okay. We can talk about the replacement cost, how uh, replacement cost is calculated and how the replacement cost is being used to project the cash flows. So first of all, replacement project analysis occurs when the firm uh, must decide whether to replace an existing asset with a newer or better asset. And the main reason to do that is to reduce the cost and to increase the profitability of that project. So you, start, you let's say you expanded your business already, you're running your business for one year and you realize that the computer systems or equipment that you're using in, uh, in your factory, uh, it's old and new computer system will really make you to work better in terms of costs reduction and in terms of increasing the profitability. So that was the main reason to use a uh, replacement cost. So when there is an, a replacement decision, let's say you have decided as a financial manager or general manager of the company to replace the existing assets, the relevant cash flows expand to consider disposition of the replaced assets are incremental depreciation expense and incremental cash flows. So we're gonna deal in here with the incremental value and incremental value it is the difference between the old and the new. Here we how we calculate the in cash flow. So we need three things in here. The investment cost here, investment cost. We need the cash flows and we need the depreciation. This is the thing that we already, we need only actually to calculate the NPV. So we need uh, three things in here guys. Investment cost to calculate, the cash flows, and of course, to come up with a uh, 
proper cash flow, we need to calculate the terminal volume, okay? So here we, the formulation is given. I'm going to explain you. It's better to go with the example. You can understand logically, but in here is just uh, abbreviated uh, words, uh, which may seem like complicated things that you owe it too much to memorize the many formulas. And, but when you go with the Excel spreadsheet, when you go with the example, you will understand the logic behind it. And you will say, oh, it's nothing actually. And when you calculate the incremental operating cash flows, uh, and how to calculate it, it's the way that I'm going to show it with you. So I'm not going to talk about the formula specification now, but I'll talk later. So then we're going to compute the, at the end of the year, the terminal year of Melbourne operating cash flow is just, we have uh, salvage value plus incremental value, if you remember from the old one. The terminal is calculated in the way that uh, salvage value with a tax up, uh, deduction and networking capital changes. So you add in them and you add to the cash flow. This is where it will come up with the total value of cash flow after tax. So here's given one example. I'm not gonna proceed, I'm going to leave this example. Uh, I'm going to start with the example which is given in the book. I will go, I'll continue with this example, but first I'm going to start with the book itself. Okay, here's the example is given. It's from the book. Assume that we are considering the replacement of all equipment with a new equipment that has more capacity and less costly to operate. So the characteristics of the old and the new equipment are given below. This is the futures of the old equipment and these are the futures of the new equipment. If new equipment replace the old equipment, the additional investment of 80,000 in networking capital will be required. So we'll have to make additional uh, investment in networking capital, like uh, investing more in assets by 80,000. Uh, taking into consideration that the tax rate is 30% and the required rate of return is 8%. So the cash flows uh, can be found carefully constructing the exhibit 2.19. This is the exhibit 2.19. The initial out the investment of the new equipment plus additional investment in unit or capital less after tax proceed and so on. So we need, as I told you, we should, got, we should start with the three things in order to construct our Excel spreadsheet. So here's the Excel spreadsheet. First thing, we need to find out investment costs. Second, we need to find the cash flows based on the capital, based on the uh, our futures of the old and new equipment. And then we need to calculate uh, NPV, okay? Just three things that we should take into consideration how to not to, lo not to lose yourself in calculating. So you should keep this thing. So we should start with the first. Like initial outlet means your total investment cost. What is your total investment cost? It's just uh, additional of these numbers, okay? So I'm gonna tell you what is what. So first of all, we need to see what is your fixed capital investment, then networking capital investment and sales all and so on. So let's start with the initial investment cost. So let's figure out what's going on with our uh, variables here, with our equipment. Look, when you purchase the old equipment, first of all, I would, rec I would recommend you to get to know the better, I, uh, the better of what's going on with the information for the old future equipment and the new future of equipment. So old equipment, you bought it for 400, but then nowadays it's currently is 600,000. Remaining life is 10 years. Annual sales is 300, so annually it's being sold for 300,000. So it gives you every year for 10 years, you projection like annually you will sell for 300,000. The cash operating expenses will be 120,000 all years. Annual uh, depreciation will be 40,000. Annual account to salvage value will be zero and expected salvage value will be 100,000. The same thing uh, with the new equipment. New equipment uh, acquisition costs 1 million. Uh, life is 10 years. The annual sales, you can see that it gives you more sales. 
uh, but a little bit more expensive, but with more sales proportionally. Annual depreciation is 100 and expected salvage value 200. But accounting salvage, salvage value is zero. Like we will record that there is no gain because uh, when you record that there is a gain after, like when you use 10 years and you want to sell your equipment, when you sell it, you have to pay tax on it. If you remember uh, from the previous example here, sorry, uh, we sold our equipment for 5 million. Okay, we sold it for 5 million. And which is taxed by 35%, okay? Then we should deduct 35. So for the purpose of uh, not paying the tax, for the purpose of like saving from the tax, the companies may decide to say that the, sell, the value of the equipment will be zero in terms of accounting. But expected value, basically we're gonna sell it for as we have seen here for 200,000 for the new equipment, the expected value will be 100,000. So let's start. So first outlay, how to calculate the first initial outlay. I'm just gonna type it here. First, you need to type, you need to calculate the investment cost, okay? First, we need to calculate investment cost. Investment cost is equal to Please guys, if I am not clear in anything, just stop me and ask me, okay? Without any hesitation. Fixed capital investment plus networking capital investment minus, uh, this is actually guys, we used to calculate uh, for normal investment cost, like fixed capital cost and change in networking capital, how much we invest in, new, in networking capital. But as we can see that the current market value, logically, when you purchase, uh, say, uh, when you purchase a new equipment, you, do, you, you will have to sell the uh, old one. So there should be an incremental value, okay? This is much you pay, and this is much you sell it for. So which means, you have to subtract the selling price, so sale of old equipment. I'm just gonna I'm gonna write it as so abbreviated, okay? Sale of old and plus plus. Uh, here's the important thing. You remember we bought our equipment for $400,000. And now we have to sell it for $600. How much profit we make in here? 200. So that means any profits generated by the company should be taxed. And our tax rate is given here, it's 30%. So it's tax times, so we should subtract the tax amount, uh, which is, Sale minus book, okay? Book value. I'm talking about the old, okay? This is sale of old and book of old. This is a calculation of investment cost. Okay, how are we gonna calculate the investment cost actually? Do you have any questions? If you, if you add it, that's great. Okay. Now, our investment cost is, let's just substitute all the numbers. Uh, we have a fixed capital investment, which is 1 million we pay for acquisition. So 1 million uh, plus 80,000. It's a network uh, can capital investment it's we it's required by conditions in the questions and minus uh, sale price of the salt for how much we're selling it we're selling for six hundred thousand and plus tax 
uh, which is here is 0 30 times 600,000 minus let me put just gap between this sorry yes, why did you take 8,000 8, 80, uh, because uh, if you remember from the previous case uh, investment cost mm -hmm. calculation it is just fixed capital investment change in networking capital uh, no, where did you find network? Ah, it's given, it's given here. It's given. It's oh, given yeah, in the question. Right. It's given. It's given. Okay, thanks. Okay, you're welcome. So 400,000. And if you just calculate, you should come up with investment cost of 540,000 in total. Okay, this is we calculate the investment cost. So the logic is the same for ev all the time, okay? For this is for replacement cost, okay, guys? Just keep in mind, this is how it's calculated for replacement. Fixed, co fixed capital investment my plus net networking capital investment minus the sale price of the existing old equipment and plus the tax of uh, appreciation in the value. So how much you appreciate is by appreciate by 200,000, you make a profit on it. So you paid 400, but you're saying for 600. So there is a tax you have to pay for it actually. Now, this is investment cost that we pay actually. This will be a, a negative sign, okay guys? It's a negative sign. Okay. I'm just, uh, that's done. Now, uh, what is left? If we go uh, to the income statement, in the income statement, second, we need to calculate the cash flows. The cash flows for income statements, like cash flow after operating taxes, cash operating, uh, operating cash flow after payment of the tax. And we can do it through the applying the income statement. Okay. I'm saving this investment cost. And the only thing that you will do in here using the income statement, you just use the differences between this and between all the new. So we go to Excel, we create this table. So our investment outlay is 540, but how did we derive it? We derived it from fixed capital investment, which was One million then networking capital investment, which was eighty thousand sale of the old one it was six hundred thousand and this was uh, zero thirty times two hundred thousand why two hundred is six hundred minus four hundred okay make it dollar sign and let me make it just some of it oops 600 1 million and this one it should be a subtraction actually okay this is my total investment cost Okay, now uh, I need to calculate the sales, guys. You remember uh, from the question, look, annual sales in the old one was 300, in the new one, 450. So we need to take on the incremental, like difference between the new and the old, with and without, which is, uh, who can tell me what, is, which should be the, what should be the sales in here? One hundred. Look at here again. Three hundred thousand is annual sales for old. Annual sales for four hundred fifty. So the difference is one hundred fifty. One hundred and fifty. I'm just directly typing, or make it like this: four hundred and fifty minus three hundred thousand. And they are all same for all years. Okay for 10 years the life is 10 years it said it is it is said in the question here sorry 
remaining life for the old one and the new for the new equipment is 10 years so we are considering just 10 years cash operating expenses is one was 120 the other one was 150 so uh, 150 minus 120 thousands which is 30,000 and all same for all years. Uh, in here, uh, we can use all net, all uh, like two types. So we can use like a straight line. We can use uh, modified accelerated recovery system, but let's go with the straight line. Uh, but in here guys, uh, we, uh, it's calculated, uh, it's giving you a straight line depreciation. Look, annual depreciation is 40,000, annual depreciation is 100,000. So we're just getting the difference, okay? One hundred thousand minus forty thousand. Okay, it's annually incremental. We are taking only the incremental values. So once we just fill this, the rest is nothing, it's just a piece of cake, just calculation. 150 minus this, minus this. This is how much we get it. Okay. And the tax rate is not 35, but it's 30%. So tax rate times 0 0.30, 18,000. Then we just, uh, from here, we subtract this one. And we are adding back our depreciation. We should add it back to our depreciation. Okay. Then after tax cash flows, so what it means here, we just sum it up. So now we started to derive our operating cash flow. Now, investment cost, we found it. There is no problem. Uh, cash flow, we found it. There is no problem. And here the terminal of non-operating cash flow is calculated as well. But how it is calculated, I'm gonna tell you as well. Don't worry, don't worry about it. We're gonna go again. So it's 150 and it is added to here. Then let's uh, see the, what is the NPV. NPV is uh, rate should be 8% as it said in the question. So it's 8%. And 10 years, our MPV is $213,000. And our IRR is 15%. And MPV with IRR is zero. So would you accept this project? Yes. yes. Yes, it gives you a positive MPV. So uh, actually accepting this project, it means would you replace a new, uh, the old equipment with the new equipment? Yes, because it gives you a positive MPV of replacement project. So if you have a certain decision that you want to replace uh, your old uh, equipment with the new equipment, then it's a good decision. Because as you can see, the MPV is positive and internal rate of return is higher than required rate of return. So it gives you kind of indication. This is project that it worth to go with it. Okay, we know how to calculate the investment cost of considering these numbers and we know how to calculate the cash flows. But now we need to proceed with the terminal non-operating cash flow how do we calculate it okay let's go it's a bit longer but uh, still it's uh, logical 
Now, let me type here. So, uh, terminal non operating cash flow is equal to salvage value. Salvage value terminal plus net working capital investment. Until this point, you know it, how to do it, yes? If this salvage value, when you sell it and you gain some taxes, uh, you gain some profit on it, you have to pay the taxes like on the gain, like 30%. This is what we know from the previous example. But in here, we'll make with some differentiation. So minus tax that you pay. Salvage value for terminal. Minus this is uh, expected salvage value. This is accounting, okay? Book book value. We can just leave it be, okay? Then means that uh, it is equal. So salvage value in here is equal to one hundred and two hundred. So what we do, we just uh, we should take the differentiation. We are taking only incremental values, okay? So the salvage value between the old and the new, it's just incremental, which is 200,000. Minus 100,000. Let me get, get into brackets. Plus, Change in networking capital, which is 80,000, and minus 0.30% of the tax that you pay for expected value, which is uh, 200,000. I mean, this salvage value between same thing, this, this and this are the same thing. And this is the B is, this is accounting salvage value, okay? B represents accounting salvage value, which is zero and zero, okay? Just take into consideration. B represents accounting salvage value and salvage represents the expected salvage value. So 200 minus 100,000, but let me put uh, kind of this bracket. And minus zero, minus zero. Why am I typing zero, zero? Just for you to understand that zero minus zero. If it was there some value in here, you should add it, okay? B represents, okay, and we get in total 150,000. This is how we calculate it. Oops. Oh my gosh, my bad. I should have saved anyway. Let me type total terminal uh, non operating cash flow is equal to 200,000 minus 100,000 plus 80,000. Minus uh, 0 0.30 times the new bracket, open the bracket, 200 minus 100,000, close the bracket, minus 0 minus 0. 
and we'll get it 150,000. Let me put it here. So this is how we calculate it. So this is a salvage value. Uh, the formula is given in the slides as well. You can follow it, but for you, I would like you to understand the logic why we're taking it. So salvage value, we're taking the incremental value between the new and the old. Then we're adding networking capital minus tax in the appreciation of the value that we did it in the previous uh, case as well. If there was accounting salvage value, then we should have taken into consideration as well. But here it's a zero, we're just putting zero, zero. So from here, you're saving it actually. So the total terminal value uh, of cash flow, of non operating cash flow, is equal to 150,000. Save it. So here, how we calculate the terminal non-operating cash flow. Then we add it back here, then we get, uh, what do you call it as total of the with uh, operating cash flow, and then we calculate the NPV. This is, we call it a replacement cost with uh, straight line depreciation, but we have a, we may have a replacement cost Replacement cost with MRCS. Let's do it. Once you practice more and more, you will understand better. So don't worry once we finish the chapter itself. I'm just giving you the explanation. When we finish, I'm gonna go over all the calculation we did so far, okay? Don't worry about it. Okay, now uh, our depreciation, it's not straight line, but it's, let's say, MRCS now. So everything is the same, investment cost is the same, the terminal non-operating cash flow is the same, but only the, the depreciation methodology is changed. And let's see the depreciation methodology table here. Uh, here, what you should consider, guys, is how many years the useful life will be the depreciation. Is We're going to apply the table itself. It's, it's 10 years we're going to have. So 10 years, we're going to replace it by the percentage of it, okay? The percentages of table is given here. So we're going to see the recovery period, which is... 10 years, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So they do consider the 11s here. So as we don't have, uh, as we don't have, uh, what do you call it? The, the rate of the, the years of the 11th, we were assuming that our project will run for 10 years. So we're gonna add this, uh, the last, the 12th years uh, percentage to the 10th year to make it 10, okay? Or you may make it, uh, for example, uh, it's up to the firm. Actually, this decision depends on the companies itself. The company may decide it. This is the last to put it and divide it in a way so that it's fixed for the last four years. Okay? Like uh, it's being converted to the straight line to depreciation, straight line to the zero depreciation methodology on the eighth, on the seventh, on the sixth years. So the first year, our depreciation will be. 10% of investment cost, so of 1 million.
not 1 million, but it's of incremental value, then we should take, uh, it should be incremental value, yes, yes, here we go, here we go, here we go. So we need to take the incremental value of the depreciation of the 1,600,000 1, of uh, how much it was bought and how much it was sold, and then we take the depreciation methodology in here. So we get just incremental value of it. So we need to take some different calculations separately as well. So that means that uh, we purchased this for 1 million uh, for the new equipment, and we purchased the equipment for what do you call it, 400,000. So the difference, which is uh, 600,000. So we're going to take the 10% of 600. Uh, sorry, why 600? Uh, because uh, new equipment mm -hmm. is 1 million. And all the equipment is 400,000. All the equipment. So if you take the 10% of it and 10% of it in the value, they will come up as a 10% of the 600,000. We need to get the incremental value. Okay? okay. So 10% of this. I shouldn't put any gap. We here. can subtract first and then take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is what I was saying. Like, let's just subtract and just take the value of it, of the 600,000. Just of direct of the incremental value, rather than just doing double work, like calculating the uh, marks for new equipment and the old equipment, and then getting the. So we just get the subtraction. It's one million minus four hundred. This is incremental value. So. Uh, 0 10 times 600,000. Let me just make it like this. Incremental. Incremental value. So we get 60,000. Then in the second year, there is another rate we should apply, which is 18%. Uh, 0 18 times same amount. Okay, then we apply third one, 14.40, 0, 14.40 times 600. Then 1152%. Nine point twenty two times six hundred. But uh, the logic is that it should be straight line to the zero at the end. So the value should be deteriorated fully. This is the assumption. Seven thirty seven. Seven times six hundred thousand. Then we proceed with six five five zero times six hundred. So it will be the same for these last two years. Okay, but for the last year, you can add so zero point zero six. Let's make it like this zero point zero six five five plus three point twenty nine zero point zero. 329. Guys, I'm gonna let you go. We have got, don't worry, we have time. 
So, and this time by 600,000. So the interest rates that you are using in total, they should make like 100%. And the value, if you sum it, they should come up with this 600 in total. Yes, we are good. Okay, now it's straight line to the zero. Now we change the, Professor, yes, please. Uh, could you show the rate the last 10th year? It's For the last 10th rate. year, I added the 11th year Zero because point. we don't have the 11th year of depreciation or the 11th year of our project. I'm just adding the depreciation to here. I might have distributed among this, but uh, I decided to add it to the last year. But you, it's up to you. But it's better to add it to the last year so it can be seen, okay, what you're doing. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now, uh, our replacement cost with uh, modified accelerated cost recovery system is 220,000, our NPV. And here the NPV is 230. You see how the NPV changes, guys, with modified system. So what conclusion can we make? Look, NPV with straight line depreciation is 759. MPV with uh, MRC is 746. So it gives you the different answers. It gives you a different NPV. So it might, you might, uh, might uh, the financial manager, they may, might, may decide to manipulate. For example, if they apply for credit for financial support from any financial institution, they might decide to show the highest NPV, rather than they're showing, showing this one. Okay, they can just play with the numbers to show. But in reality, it can be this, but in here we can get this one because what it does, what it does, the depreciation methodology changes, you see? How much it changes. So this uh, change, please keep in mind, increase in MPV in here, it means uh, it's a benefit you get from the tax is the benefit you get from the tax because the higher you show and at the end you show, you can see that you are showing it with a higher amount. And that's why it reduces the, it increases kind of tax amount, but at the end you're adding this depreciation back. Why you're adding back because the depreciation is not the direct cost, it's a, a non-cash item. So we need to add it back and to show the real picture of our operating cash flows after the tax. So this is done for today, guys. I'm gonna upload this uh, to Moodle as well. You can just go and see practice at home as well. And then uh, tomorrow we're gonna continue with our topic. If you don't have any questions, thank you so much. I will see you tomorrow. You can leave the conference. Thank you, Professor. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.